What's going on guys? It's Dave. I'm super, super excited to be doing a video series on LXC. We are finally at a kernel version that's new enough being distributed in uh, a new Ubuntu release that we can actually play with a stable version of LXC. Now, what is LXC? It is basically OS level virtualization. That means inside of your existing Ubuntu machine, you can run a virtual Ubuntu machine. That virtual Ubuntu machine will basically not know that it's inside of a container. And so you can do stuff inside of it, like if you're a programmer, you could build an application that's very easy to deploy from there because you basically just, you can kind of clone that machine and run it on a server. It's a good way to keep different sort of parts of your computer use separate. So if, for example, you are building some kind of web application and you want a development server for that that you can SSH into and you want to kind of keep sort of isolated the services that you run so that when you go to an internet cafe, people aren't like hacking into your box because you've got a bunch of open ports that are useful to you at home. You could just turn off the container that's running the SSH ser service and then it's off and there you go. Now you could do that with a normal service on your machine too, but it's easier to have to think about starting a service that makes you vulnerable than it is to always remember to shut it off when you go somewhere. You can play with new software without kind of polluting your real system. So you can install a bunch of weird packages that might conflict with stuff on your main system just to try them out. And then if it doesn't work out or it turns out to be weird, you can just nuke the thing or roll back to a previous snapshot. Yes, they have snapshotting. It's awesome. And don't have to worry about like going and finding config files that it made or something that was missed during the uninstall, especially if you're compiling stuff and not installing through a package manager, you can sometimes make a mess. You can even test totally different Linux distributions. So I'm going to run like Arch inside of Ubuntu and I can run basically a fully functional Arch distribution inside of Ubuntu and it'll behave just like Arch. It won't know that it's not on a physical machine. So you can kind of try new distributions with almost no, like you don't even have to go dig up some old laptop or something to try a new distribution on. You can literally just do it while you're surfing the web and doing other stuff. Also, it's cool for like the first time you start building more intense distributions. Like if you're doing maybe Arch or Gen 2 or even doing something like Linux from scratch, it's really great to be able to do that in a separate environment so that you can like figure out all the errors you're getting or do some research in a browser on your main machine while working in a totally isolated or mostly isolated little environment. Okay, so this is really cool stuff. I hope that you have some ideas for how this could be useful for you. Um, it's starting to be mature enough now in the 1.0 version that you can use LXC for even things like kind of isolating services. It's not a bulletproof security thing. They're working on it, but I'm starting to think it's a better idea to like run SSH or something inside of a container than it is outside of one. Basically, there's some there's some things in the past uh, that have been similar to this. It all started with uh, ch root ch root change root. Uh, that's like early 1980s, and that's basically a way to set a root directory for a process that's not like the system's actual root. Now, there's all kinds of problems with this. There's lots of ways to break out of it, but that was the 80s. It's been vastly improved on Unix and now Linux systems since then. And Unix especially, uh, ha they've had some really, really cool tools to play with that the Linux world hasn't really been able to put into the kernel or use even a lot of the time. So you've got like BSD jails, those are fantastic. Um, and at this point, they're still much more mature than LXC. So like I would probably use BSD jails at this point um, if I had to roll something into production. And same with Solaris zones, um, it's another sort of virtual machine that uses the same kernel that your main operating system uses. That means you can perform much better in your virtual machines because they're just sharing the same kernel. There's no like translation layer between your container or VM and the host machine. Of course, that also comes with problems, right? Because if you cause a kernel panic in, in a container, that means your host machine also locks up and dies. So there you go. It's a trade-off. LXC is pretty mature. It's 1.0 now, so I, I would consider rolling it into production. However, I have been in production environments that had hundreds of LXC containers rolled out before it was anywhere near mature. So you'll probably be seeing this a lot. It's also tending to replace things like OpenVZ in a lot of environments. And OpenVZ still has, I think, a little bit more features than LXC. But LXC is in the mainline Linux kernel. 
And that's, I think, the reason why it's going to be very actively developed now, and it's going to mature pretty quickly, because it's no longer just a bunch of, it's like, it's not a patched kernel, it's not just some extra stuff that you install on top of Linux. It leverages a lot of the new features like control groups and namespacing that the newest Linux kernels have. So I think this is going to be a good bet to learn this, because I think this is one of those things that if you're just trying to get started with system administration, if you can kind of talk about this intelligently during an interview and demonstrate that you've played with it, that you understand it, that you understand its limitations and also have some good ideas about how you can use this stuff creatively, it's going to give you a huge leg up. Okay, so just to give you some idea of the features that we've got right now, a pretty good chart is here. I'll put this link in the description for the video. If you look at operating system level of virtualization and scroll down to implementations, you can see kind of a chart where you see all these features on the top and the software on the left. And you can see like FreeBSD jails, Solaris containers. I mean, they're really mature. They have most of these things available. Um, but LXC is pretty good. And this is actually, this actually looks outdated um, slightly because you've got much better file system isolation with newer versions of the kernel. So this probably should be approaching a yes for LXC. Um, copy on write uh, just lets you do cool snapshotting things and save space. Uh, we're going to be working, I think, with uh, ButterFS. Oh, um, this is sort of like the very immature Linux clone of ZFS. Um, disk quotas, I think, is possible in 1.0. I'm not 100% sure. But you've already got features like um, I.O. rate limiting, memory limits, CPU quotas, and network isolation. Checkpointing is possible. However, live migrations aren't. That means you can't move a container between hosts while it's running yet. Maybe they'll figure out a way to do that. And also root privilege isolation. This is, you can see, no with a lot of footnotes. I'm pretty sure, you, I mean, you can run unprivileged containers now, so this is a lot safer uh, than it was. But this no is also probably approaching a yes. And it's being developed at great speed, so a lot of these red things will become green shortly. And like, even this is already outdated, you can see, because like this is no longer partial and this is no longer true. So there you go. And these things are, I mean, these are mostly like a little bit of security features and mostly performance features. So like one, you know, one program on some container can't hog the resources of your entire machine. You can limit those things. And part of the series will be me showing you how to do that. I'd like to acknowledge the series of posts from one of the LXC developers that I'm basing this entire series on. That would be this here, this LXC blog post series from Stefan Graber. This video series is basically just taking you through all these posts. Some of them are fairly long. I still recommend you read them if you're gonna do anything serious with this, but I wanna demonstrate this because I know a lot of people just aren't gonna read these posts and you should still see as far as I know, this is the most up-to-date set of tutorials on how to work with LXC. And I'd I just really wanted to make a video version of this because not everyone will read these tutorials. Cool. So in the next video, we'll get started and we'll install LXC and create our first virtual machines. The tools that they've built make this really simple. So all this introduction and theory thing should probably be one of the longer videos in this series. So um, if this is helpful for giving you an overview, give this video a like. Subscribe if you want to be updated when I release um, the rest of the series. It'll probably be seven or eight videos. And I'll take you through sort of this complete tutorial and all the basics, all the things that maybe will change in the next few months with LXC. Cool. See you in the next video.